Hello, everyone, and welcome to the So Heil Ali Show, the only podcast hosted by somebody who just attended the Indiana Hoosiers football game against the Michigan Wolverines. I'm sure there were other podcasters there. In fact, I'm positive of it. But I'm the one coming to you today. Here we are, guys. This is episode 53 of the Sohail Ali Show. I, of course, am your host, Sohail Ali. It'd be kind of weird if it was a show called the Sohail Ali Show that was not hosted by me, but maybe there are copycats who are doing it even better. You can imagine. That's not very difficult. But, guys, I'm very excited to be bringing you another episode of this podcast. We're going to talk about so many news uh things going on in the news that's what they're called right news things um you know what he just got elected again and i'm i'm honestly starting to talk like him again which is not good but uh i'm very excited to be talking about it with you all like i mentioned up top iu football is 10 and 0 let's go hoosiers baby we are rolling it's a good time we just went to the game last night i'll tell you all about the game uh the indiana hoosiers football team now being 10 and 0 and that's pretty great um we're gonna talk about uh we're gonna talk about it we're gonna talk about the election you know donald trump is now the 47th president of the united states uh you know uh, put up a bit of a fight uh, against him but we'll see kind of how that goes and uh, we're gonna talk about it he, he chose his uh chief of staff uh we're gonna talk about that who he chose and why uh, a little bit of news out of Hollywood. Star Wars uh, has a new writer producer uh, making the next trilogy of Star Wars movies for Lucasfilm. Uh, that should be a real easy thing to do, I'm sure. Uh, some uh, Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey news. If you guys uh, heard about this incident, Jason Kelsey had with a, uh, a fan, uh, hardly a fan of his, and certainly not a fan of his uh, brother's girlfriend, Taylor Swift. We'll talk about that incident there, Travis Kelsey and the brothers there. Uh, Australia made a big move this week. Uh, Australia, to my fellow, uh, not fellow Australians, but, you know, good day, mate. Um, to the Australians out there, they, they banned young teens from using social media this week, which we can talk about. Is it a good idea, bad idea? Of course, the election. We'll do a little weekly recap of all the things that I was up to last week. Uh, we'll go through some new jokes, as we always do. We got to, we got to, I got to pitch the new jokes to you guys, because if anything tickles you, I'll, I'll try it, and then we'll kind of see how it comes out. You know, we see how jokes, you know, form themselves before I go, you know, die on stage. And then I'll talk about any upcoming shows I have. Uh, I do have some upcoming shows I want to tell you all about and uh, hope to see you there. But that's the intro, man. Here we go. We're going to jump right into it. And of course, uh, right off the bat, if you're listening or watching rather on uh, YouTube, hello, uh, hopefully we're looking all right. Uh, YouTube, uh, please leave us a like, comment below, and subscribe. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I know you're looking at it. It's red. Let's make it not red. Let's make it gray. Uh, because gray is better. Uh, gray ball 20, my first email. Uh, don't ask why. Um, it was a yoga ball. Um, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to stay updated with all future episodes. Guys, we up, we upload this podcast every week. I upload it on uh, Mondays at noon on YouTube, in the mornings on Spotify. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please give this podcast a follow. A five-star rating would really help us out. And, of course, uh, share it with a friend if you enjoyed it, if you had a laugh, if you got a kick out of it. And uh, without further ado, let's jump into it with the first topic here. The Indiana Hoosiers football team are 10-0. and That's right. 10 wins. They've won 10 wins for the first time in program history. I don't think IU had 10 wins my entire time as a student there. And I was there six years. Hey, for some of us, it takes longer. Um, no, I, I I stayed for my master's, a couple of master's degrees. Uh, I should probably use one of those uh, one of these days. But uh, that's right, the Indiana Hoosiers football team are ten and zero for the first time ever. Uh, certainly, uh, ten and zero for the first time ever. Ten wins in one season in program history. It's amazing. Uh, Coach Signetti has absolutely transformed this team. Uh, we were there at the game yesterday. Uh, 50, what was it, 52,000 fans, whatever Memorial Stadium holds. Uh, we were there, we were cheering, I was, you know, waving the towel, freaking arm got so tired, I, f- I said, you should uh, give me a scholarship, you know, my arm's getting so sore. Uh, you know, this is this is not a good motion, I know, for those of you watching, you're like, please stop doing that. But um, we were waving the towels, man, I, I apologize if my voice comes off a bit hoarse today because we were screaming at this game, man. We were screaming our heads off because they barely, and I mean it barely, we barely got out alive 20-15 to 15 against the defending champions, the Michigan Wolverines. And, uh, 
you know, the IU Hoosiers, uh, Hoosiers who aren't even an animal. We don't even have a mascot, by the way. It's just someone from Indiana. So now, technically, someone from Indiana has beaten a Wolverine, which I think could happen. It's not likely. You know, you ever seen a Wolverine? They're very scary. They got the claws and the whole thing. Not from the comic book. He's scary, too. But the actual animal, a Wolverine. I'm saying an average Larry from from Gary. Larry from Gary. I didn't even try to do that. Larry from Brown County, let's say, could take a Wolverine. Because he did yesterday. And the Indiana Hoosiers uh, won the game. So that was really exciting. I was really happy to be there. Uh, my girlfriend Caroline and I, her former roommate Alex was there. Uh, the, the Tan family had a, a tailgate out at IU Credit Union uh, parking lot. Very fun time uh, and, and, and really a good time overall for the IU fans. It was gut-wrenching, man. We did not uh, enjoy, you know, when uh, early on in the, in the football season, Coach Signetti was like, we need to keep the fans in the stands after halftime. This is something he kept saying. We got to keep people in the stands after halftime. And uh, being there in the fourth quarter with like four minutes, five minutes to go, still not knowing if IU would pull this off, I turned to Caroline and I said, you know, when Coach Signetti said he wanted the fans to stay for the entire game, this is not what I had in mind because it's not the feeling you want to have just, you know, keeling over, you know, wincing, cringing at every other mistake, man. But they pulled it off. And now the Hoosiers, baby, 10-0. Were you guys there? Were you watching? Fellow Hoosiers, comment below. It's a really good time uh, to be an IU fan because for so long it's been difficult. Uh, you know, we're more we are a basketball school, five national championships at the basketball program. And now, you know, I was checking the numbers yesterday the other day. I was checking the numbers on social media uh, on the IU football account versus the IU basketball account. And I think the IU football account is kind of catching up on the uh, IU basketball Instagram page, at least. I think the IU basketball Instagram or Twitter rather still has like a million followers, which is crazy. But the Instagrams are like they're kind of getting there. It's like 140,000 to like 120,000. A little crazy there. But it's a fun time, man. Uh, Coach Signetti, this is a guy who embodies leadership you know it's all leadership anytime someone i hear you know complains about work complains about something going on in their life it almost always goes down to leadership you know and coach signetti and the staff that he brought and implemented his system clearly it's amazing you know he turned to uh, the cbs reporter after the game and said uh he's such an entertainer too that's why i love coach man he's such an entertainer he does not waste a moment to you know make a crack have some swagger tell a joke it's really it's awesome we i watch all his press conferences i still need to make it out to one of the uh inside iu football episodes that they do with uh the one and only legend don fisher who i've had on this podcast by the way you don't believe me look it up right now look up don fisher and just put like my name and you'll find it everywhere on this channel uh, I had a great interview with uh, Mr. Don Fisher. Don Fisher hosts Inside IU Football every Thursday from Hoosier Hanks, apparently, which nothing against Hoosier Hanks. Uh, I just think they got off on a rough start here in town. I still have not enjoyed uh, their food yet because I haven't had it. Not That's not to say it's not good. Um, this is clearly uh, going to win me a sponsorship. But uh, I still want to make it out, man. Uh, Thursdays at, I think, 7.15, they do it from uh, Hoosier Hanks over there. Um, on College Avenue. So, uh, but Coach Signetti, uh, after the game, uh, look at me, I'm doing like the weave now, right? We'll, we'll get into him. Um, after the game, he tur- the CBS reporter, he just kind of turns to her and he's like, uh, so what, what are we, 10-0? and And uh, she's like, that's right, Coach. You, uh, you guys are 10-0 and for the first time in uh, program history. And he just kind of looks around. He goes, yeah, not bad. Not bad, dude. I would run through a brick wall for this man. Like, that's what everyone says, right? Run through a brick wall. Uh, it's just so great, you know. I'm, I'm 26 years old. I, I was an undergrad at IU, let's see now, eight years ago, right? Eight years ago from 2016 to 2020, and then I stayed two years for Masters. And if you asked us then, hey, if you told us then, right? That's what they say. If you told us then, hey... In 2024, which at the time probably sounded like eons later, but in 2024, the Indiana Hoosiers football team is going to have a new coach. He's going to be great. You're going to sell out home games. You're going to get college game day, for crying out loud. 
You're going to get CBS primetime 3.30 kickoff. You're going to be there, and on week on on Monday, November 11th, you're going to wake up, and the Indiana Hoosiers are 10-0. and 10-0? and 0? I would say, yeah, that's great, man, but I think you're talking about Bama. Yeah, I, I, that's cool, man. I think you're talking about, uh, you know, USC, LSU, Indiana University. But we'd have to believe them because it happened and it's happening. And so it's such a fun time. And it's a fun time, uh, especially because, you know, in a way, things are a little bit, uh, maybe a little bleak. I'm not just talking about the weather. That's uh, my own uh, symbol hat. Uh, Please clap. No, uh, things are a little bleak, uh, you know, because, guys, what happened? I'm not going to lie to you guys. At the uh, Comedy Attic mic on Wednesday, you know, there was kind of this air, you know, it was the, the day after the election. And uh, I don't know for those of you who maybe didn't see what happened in uh, America's presidential election. Um, good for you. But um, so there's the, kind of this air of kind of like, you know, people a little down, a little energy's low. So, you know, uh, it was kind of a, a rule we kind of said, okay, you know what? We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to bring it up. We're here to laugh. We're here to have a good time. And that was true. That's what we wanted to do. And that was the right thing. But I just kind of, you know, just kind of opened my set. I said, uh, you guys doing good? Yeah. What happened today? Anyway, uh, and just uh, there was a bit of a relief there too, you know. There was a bit of a maybe an awkward uh, release of a laugh, but uh, they did not like the next line which I had, which was, "Hey, well, at least there won't be an insurrection." Anyway, um, and uh, that yeah, so I said, "Well, okay, great start," and we got into it. But um, that's really the the only kind of joke I had, which was, you know, at least there won't be one. At least there won't be an insurrection, because you know, you know, Democrats, we're not gonna do an insurrection. We're not going to do an insurrection. We barely, you know, made it to the polls. No, I'm sure it was fine. But, you know, we're not going to have an, a democratic insurrection is going to be like, is, is, a, is a star Starbucks protest. A democratic insurrection is basically any parade you see for a cause. That's, that's what we do. I, I say we because that's the party. I'm not afraid to put my own political beliefs out there. I vote Democrat. But... God, it's hard sometimes. It's hard to say, come on, guys. Really? This is what we're talking about? But, you know, uh, what's more personal than politics? Um, your comedy taste, obviously. So this is a comedy podcast, but we talk about all sorts of things, right? But uh, here we go with the weave again. But let's talk about what he did, right? So Donald Trump, we're, we're, we are, we're open and honest. This is what happened. Donald Trump won. Uh, he is now the 47th president of the United States, um, I'm just, I, I, you know, he's funny, I like, he's funny, he's got comedic timing, and it's kind of fun to watch, it's not always fun to watch, uh, it's usually painful, but sometimes, uh, you know, like the Al Smith dinner, the jokes they write for him, and how he tells them, I, I get a kick out of it, I can't lie, I can't lie to you, but what did Trump do this week, man, Trump chose his White House chief of staff, this is true, Trump uh, selected his White House chief of staff as Susie Wiles, that's right, Susie Wiles is now uh, Trump's White House chief of staff, marking the first time that a woman has served as chief of staff. Uh, This is true. So, you know, I guess he can't hate women after all, right? That's, you know, uh, that's the only thing I had for that. You know, uh, at least he gave a job to one, Um, but he took one from another. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to clip that. Um, but yeah, this is so, yeah, Su- Susie Wiles, I believe uh, she was uh, running his campaign, uh, the 2016 one and the, the 2020 one. Uh, she was running his campaigns, you know, um, leading things. She's always in the rooms with him. There's some really fascinating behind the scenes footage that's been floating around. Have you guys seen this footage? It's really amazing. Like on TikTok, I saw a couple of them, but on YouTube, they had it's like behind the scenes during uh, when Kamala spoke at the DNC it was like Trump uh Matt Gates uh and a bunch of the advisors basically the Trump team all in a room uh Trump's like sipping on a coke I swear I think there was like McDonald's on the table it's like damn dude, this is a this is a hell of a kickback but what are they doing they're not kicking back they're basically looking for uh, what to tweet in this moment. So Trump is like just rattling. It's it's showing how Trump tweets. My mom actually told me about it. So shout out to you, mom. I love you. And uh, I'm sorry. But uh, he's he's like rattling off. He's just like basically blabbing, blabbing, saying, let's talk about this. Let's hit him with that. And then th- this girl's just like typing furiously on the keyboard, just getting it out there and just tweet, 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 truth social, truth social. 
um, which was kind of interesting to see, right? Because I don't know if any of us really thought that was Trump, you know, putting his thumbs on the screen. I don't think the dude could like even see it, you know, if he actually did imagine the typos. Um, but that's just old person technology joke, I guess. Um, but yeah, he's just like, he's, he's, speak, he's speaking it. This could be a hell of an ad for like an AI tool though. Let's be honest. Because I looked, they showed the girl's laptop and it's just like typing on like, I swear to God, like an online notepad. Dude, you got to open up ChatGPT, Microsoft Copilot, have them just like speech to text, put it in there and then give the prompt like, turn this into a pretty, turn this into something a, a president would say. And then ChatGPT is like, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. Um, but uh, but that that whole thing would be a hell of an ad for these AI tools. I think it really would be. But uh, but this, so this this behind the scenes footage is going on, and uh, it's really it, it looks like as everyone was saying in the comments, it looks like an episode of Succession. Uh, God, I miss Succession, but in a way, we're living it. But uh, this this footage, the way they feel, it's like handheld. It's great the way they're editing it. He like calls into Fox News. You can see him on the phone reading his notes, and like you hear the cut between the Fox News feed. It's insane. You guys got to see this footage. But but yeah, Susie Susie Wiles, first female chief of staff, uh, and 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 she's gonna be continuing. I'm sure what whatever you know he wants. Um, they know what to do, right? That's this is politics it's crazy when people are like they're corrupt they're bullying they're lying they're changing it's like hey man they're in the dirtiest game it is you know what i mean these are not these are not your average neighborhood people these are not the people you hold nearest and dearest the, your friends your family these are not people that you would consider people you are alike these are politicians man it's like dirty it is dirty i'm not breaking any new ground here um but it is to be expected, I guess, is my kind of point here. Don't be surprised when it is what it is. Yes, we've had good people, yes, but we don't see them all the time. And now we are we live in a time where you can see people most of the time. What are they doing? What are they saying most of the time? You can't even shut it off. And, and imagination has been lost. Imagination. This is now an Epcot ad, apparently. But um, so that's that's what's going on there. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. First female chief of staff, though. He gave job to a woman, took one from another. That's pretty good. I might have to clip that one. Um, okay. Let's talk about uh, this story here out of the uh, Hollywood world. Hollywood fans, Star Wars fans indeed. So, Star Wars news. Simon Kinberg is going to write, produce, uh, is going to, Simon Kinberg is going to write and produce a new trilogy for Star Wars movies. That's right. This is moving forward in the Lucasfilm uh, side of things. I believe now from what? Episodes 10, 11, and 12. You know, continuing on the, the Star Wars, I think, Skywalker saga that ended with episode 9. Uh, an episode that I'm sure we all wish we could forget. But um, I, I just thought, I mean, this was pretty big news. You know, we haven't really heard much from the theatrical world of star wars other than the uh, mandalorian movie which i think is still coming out next year right mandalorian movie oh 2026 okay so 2026 we'll get uh mandalorian and grogu the movie which hopefully they can keep that uh that relevant for another two years but uh the star wars thing is going to be fun right so so here's the the joke i had for this which is uh uh simon kinberg to write produce uh Damn it. Let's try this from here. Simon Kinberg, Simon Kinberg is going to write and produce the new Star Wars movies, which should be super easy, right? Because uh, Star Wars fans are just so easy to please. God damn it. You know, it's it's hard. To, I try to make it more off the cuff, right? Like I'm actually talking to you guys, but and not trying to just get a clip. But uh, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll edit it up and make it seem a little more smooth. But yeah, Star Wars... New producer, new writer uh, with the Star Wars film, Simon Kinberg, uh, which uh, good luck to him because we all know Star Wars fans are so easy to please. Um, I'm kind of in that boat too, in a way, you know. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I uh, Star Wars, I'm not like the biggest fan. I have some friends that are like actual fans. I consider myself a fan, not the biggest fan, but uh, when I watch those, those uh, sequels, when I watched Force Awakens, we saw that in the IMAX. Everyone was so excited. That, that's a great movie. Honestly, that, that's still a great movie today. Last Jedi, I, I swear to God, I think I stepped out of that movie. And I think I said, that's my favorite. No, I didn't say that's my favorite. Uh, someone else did. I said, uh, that's a great film, or I had a great time. And, you know, 
I guess in the moment it was true, and then you read like reviews online and stuff, and you're like, holy shit, am I like stupid? <laughs> do I do I know anything about movies at all? And then now you know you 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 look back at it and you're like, oh, I guess it was actually uh, bad. But you know what? I stand by the experience. I I'll say this. Just go into movies, don't even know the rating, don't even know what people are saying about it. Just go in there and see what you think, right? Don't don't worry about what Rotten Tomatoes thinks. Worry about what you think. Have your own impression of it, and then you'll probably be wrong. Because I've certainly been many times. For God's sakes, I thought Evan Almighty should have like won an Oscar when I was 10 years old. Evan Almighty... I love this movie. I think it's a great family movie. Uh, not too religious. Um, but I think Evan Almighty has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 52, apparently. 52. But uh, if you asked me at 10 years old, if you told me at 10 years old that, you know, Evan Almighty, in fact, doesn't have any Oscars. It actually wasn't even nominated. I would have said they're out of their minds. It's hilarious. It's heartwarming. It's a great film. Evan Almighty. Okay, we're, we're, we're really off on a thing here. Um, let's talk about this one real quick. So, uh, Travis Kelsey. Did you guys see this? So, uh, Travis Kelsey uh, says brother Jason was defending their family in phone smashing incident. Guys, this thing was crazy. So, uh, it was on... Where was this, by the way? Uh, this this uh, incident here. It was at... Uh, State State College on College Game Day. That's right. So it was Penn State. So Jason Kelsey is just walking through uh, State College for the Penn State Ohio State football game, and this dude is just like filming him, and he's like, "How's it feel that your brother is an F word, F slur for uh, gay people? How's it feel your brother is an F word dating Taylor Swift?" First of all, that is a contradictory statement, my friend. How can you be gay and also date Taylor Swift? I guess that's where now we're getting into the spectrum of things. But I'm really trying to find the logic that this kid was using, right? Which I I think, in fact, was not to be found. He was like, Hi, your brother is a this word, dating Taylor Swift. I don't think there can be any insult, really, that precedes dating Taylor Swift, right? When you end it with dating Taylor Swift, you completely, there is no... Nothing else to be said there, right? Um, I say this. I'm I, I I'm a fan. I'm like a fan in the sense of like I'll listen to her. You know, I there are the real fans. My girlfriend Caroline, she's a big fan. She went to the concert, by the way, in Indianapolis. Uh, Caroline, congratulations. Um, uh, good luck on the financial recovery. But you can How how are you gonna insult someone and end it with? And he's dating Taylor Swift, bro. You you just a schmuck, man. But Jason. Jason it was fed up with this, and good thing too, because this guy was just right in his face with the phone, just yelling this terrible stuff. What an idiot! This slurs. I don't care. These environments. He has to be taught a lesson. And so Jason just grabbed the kid's phone and just smashed it on the ground, which I thought was amazing. Honestly, I thought was amazing. So Jason, uh, good on you, sir. And Travis defends him as he should. That's his brother. And he did the right thing. And this is, everyone was like, this is F around and find out. But this is, I'm telling you, logically, you have to have an argument. Now, I'm not saying if he had a good argument, hey, your brother's an F word. He, you know, he dressed like a cowgirl or something. I don't know. Um, but you can't, your brother's a, he's dating Taylor Swift, he's a, no he's not, he's dating the biggest star on the planet, I'm gonna say that again, he's dating the biggest star on the planet, this is true, uh, I don't know about the galaxy, there might be other worlds where there's Sailor Tift and, you know, they're entertaining billions, maybe, but she's up there as far as we're concerned, uh, on our galaxy, um, but, I thought that was pretty funny, man. Did you guys see this story? Let me comment below what you guys thought about this one. Travis Kelsey, uh, the brothers, man. They're, you can't take these guys down, man. I'll, I'll tell you. Unless they have some kind of other word scandal, I don't think they'll be uh, I think they'll be around for quite some time. So good for them. Happy for them. Um, okay, so here's a story. Again, the uh, Australia story, right? Uh, it's a good day, mate, because uh, we're going to get these kids off these phones. And uh, crikey, mate, they're fucking... Uh, <laughs> They are uh, they're on their damn phones too much. Now we're getting into a whole other thing. Anyway, Australia Australia moves to ban young teens from social media. Honestly, bravo to Australia because not only did they ban assault rifles, now they've banned uh, things that people use to uh, film the shootings. Um, 
So proposed legislation will put the country at the forefront of regulating social media access for children. I love this. Honest to God, I love this, right? So here we go, uh, announcing that they would be uh, making platforms uh, off limits to anyone under the age of 16. This is great. Dude, this is great. Are you kidding me? There are adults, 26-year-old adults like myself and older, who are completely destroyed by this thing, man. Uh, and who said this? So the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, says, social media is doing harm to our kids, and I'm calling time on it. Good for you, Prime Minister. Good for you. And uh, what did he say? Uh, it would take effect 12 months later. X, TikTok, Meta, they did not immediately respond to comments. Um, so now the Australian, I'll tell you this right now, the Australian teens got a lot bigger problems to worry about than social media. They got to worry about not getting killed every time they step out of their house. They got fucking exotic birds, dragons, crocodiles. I, I don't know which ones. Crocodiles, I think, right? Yeah, crikey. It's a croc. Cro crocodiles. Sti too soon. Uh, stingrays. Um, the fucking koalas they got koalas with chlamydia these these guys got bigger problems than uh you know being on twitter too long these guys are in australia step outside your house it's a death zone and i think this is a great idea because get off the phone look up dude look up watch your step you're gonna step into a an aborigines hut no it's terrible um hey they didn't treat them well uh this is a history podcast but uh, th that's a good one, right? Uh, Australia bans social media, but I think they got bigger problems. They got bigger. They got bigger. They got bigger shrimp to fry. Clip that. Um, okay, so what do you guys think? I mean, honest to God, uh, America. Let's take some notes. I think people. I think the the kids. I don't have kids. Uh, I don't have kids, but I like to think I would keep social media limited because. Man, is it tough. It's a drug, in my opinion. A drug I love. I'm a user. But it's a drug, and we have to limit the usage, right? And uh, I think Australia is setting a good example. But again, this is Australia. They got to worry about getting killed outside. These kids in America got to worry about getting killed in school. Political. But uh, Australia banned the assault rifles. So what's next? Ban the phones. You know what? They banned the assault rifles, but let's equip these kids. I want to arm these kids with weapons. Give them machetes or something because they got to fight themselves. They got to fight these animals in Australia. I'll tell you that right now. Put the phone down, grab a knife, and hope to God that you survive. <laughs> We're getting a little nutty, guys. But hey, it's the final two minutes of the podcast. I did not get into everything here, so I don't think I'm going to get a chance to rattle off any new jokes for you all today, so you're spared from that. Uh, you know what? Uh, there were some jokes in this. Yeah, there were some jokes we told, but I got to get these uh, shows in here, guys. I'm going to be hosting this weekend, all weekend, in fact, from Thursday uh, through Saturday at the Comedy Attic here in Bloomington, Indiana. On Thursday, I'm hosting for Caleb Sinan, and that's at 8 o'clock p.m. And then on Friday and Saturday, I'm hosting for Jay Jordan, which the shows are at 7.30 and 9.15 p.m. Uh, get your tickets now at ComedyAttic.com. Hope to see you guys there. Uh, I had a fun time in this episode. I hope you guys had a fun time listening. I really appreciate all the support. Uh, new viewers, new subscribers, welcome. Again, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. New episodes every Monday. And uh, God bless you. Thank you so much uh, for listening, watching. Uh, hope you have a good rest of your week, a good start to your week. And uh, I will talk to you all next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Real quick before you click away. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment below, and subscribe for all future videos. Hit that bell icon to be notified for all uploads. Have a good one.